Hi, today I'm going to talk about fitness functions in M calibration. So what is a fitness function? Well, it's a way that you can evaluate the material model. You need to always select one and the many choices in M calibration. Today I'm going to introduce a new one that we uh, created this year called RE. And I'll tell you a little bit about why we created this fitness function and when you should use it. So let's start by talking about material parameter extraction software like M calibration. This software works by selecting a set of experimental data, you select the material model, and the software itself will give you the initial guess of the material parameters. And then there is an iterative process in which the software will simulate the experiments and then evaluate how good the predictions were by comparing them to the experimental data. And that's where the fitness function come in. And then it uses an optimization to iterate in this circle. Keep in mind though, when you do this, there are really two kinds of modes for traditional stress strain data. You can do it in strain control that the test machine applies a known displacement and you measure the force or stress. In that case, the error bars will be vertical and will be stress values, delta stress values, for example. But if you run the test machine in strain control mode, like in a creep experiment, you actually apply the force or the stress and you measure the strain values. And in that case, the values you would like to evaluate or the strain the experimental and the predicted strain values. And that's what you evaluate in that case. In M calibration, there are four types of fitness functions to choose between. The ones that I typically recommend are the NMAD and now the new one, RE. But it also a mean square difference value and a R square, the coefficient of determination. I tend to not use those as much. NMAD is the one that I've been using for years. I recommended that. It really, as you can see from the equation here, it says the average difference between the experimental and prediction divided by the max of the, the experimental or the predicted. And that gives you an error in percent in some sense. But the new RE value, which is relative error, does the same thing, but it does it by point by point basis and takes the average of those. So that makes actually a big difference in some cases between these two error measures. So I'm going to talk about this in three examples. In my first example, here's the experimental data points that I, I, I was aiming for, and they're in 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. And then I have predicted data that is about 50% uh, higher. So you would think that maybe the NMAD and RE values will be uh, 50, but that's not the case because uh, you divide it uh, by the maximum of the experimental and the predicted. So it will be slightly lower, it will be 33. And both the NMAD and the RE relative error will give you basically the same fitness value. So that's great. These are equal uh, sort of in magnitude, and this is what happens in that case. Here's another case that is a little bit more surprising, perhaps. And we have three experimental data points, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. And the predictions in this case, there was a large error in the final data point here in my example. The error was 100%. The other two data points were small. And in this case, um, the NMAD fitness will have an error about 34% because it emphasizes the large numbers in, in, in this set case. The relative error will uh, in, take equal weight to all three of these numbers, and then uh, the actual value that comes up will be, be lower than NMAD because the first two data points have a lower error. So it sort of takes equal focus on all data points. So that's the difference here, but it certainly is a big difference between 21 and 34. In my last and final example, I have three data points like this, but they are not equally spaced now. They're almost logarithmically spaced. So the 0 0.01, 0 0.2, and 3. And I have a very large error in the first data point. There is a 100% error in that. And then the other two have a 10% error. In this case, the NMAD fitness, if you look at the equation here, will end up with a very small number, 9% error, simply because it focuses on the large magnitude values. You divide by the maximum average here. So that's why this is small. The relative error uh, fitness number will be equally contributing from all three, and that will be 22, 23% here. So that's a big difference. Uh, and when you have data that is more spread out like this. So to summarize, the NMAD fitness is a way to have more weight on the large magnitude data. And that can be useful when you plot a stress strain curve because you may focus on the large strain information. That's where sort of the, the stresses will be large. But if you have data where you care as much about small strain or small magnitude information, then the relative error, RE, uh, the new fitness measure in M calibration, will be better. 
one example where, where this can be very useful is if you try to fit a, say, storage modulus versus frequency information. We have data at very, very small frequencies and they're very low storage modulus, but you care about them. You, you don't just care about the large uh, the frequency information. So in a case like this, maybe all data points are equally important. Then I would have used the RE fitness value. So those are some hints about how to do this. And if you have any questions, you can ask them below.